Good evening, Oswego, and thanks for joining us. I'm Lauren Toscano. And I'm Robert Hackford. Tonight we begin with a story out of Oswego. The Salvation Army launched a Christmas kettle campaign earlier this week. And a Central New York sports pioneer, Luke Laporta, has passed away. We will have more on these stories in just a minute, but first, a quick check of your weather outside with Storm Team 10 meteorologist, Lucy Bergman. Hey Lucy, how's the weather looking out there? Good evening. We're live outside the Campus Center with a look at your current conditions. Right now it's about 33 degrees out here tonight, but if you're outside, it will feel about 27 degrees because of those winds from the west, uh, 5 to 10 miles per hour, cooling things down just a little bit for you. If we take a look at our regional radar, we'll see that we don't have much precipitation to speak of, but we do have some snow showers to our east. They're not going to be bothering us tonight. If we look at our three-day outlook, we'll see that tomorrow we have a very nice, pleasant day. Some sun, 40 degrees is your high. As we move to Thursday, increasing clouds and with that, increasing temperatures before those showers move in for Friday. I'll have a look at your five-day forecast, plus the possibility of snow coming up in just a little bit. But for right now, send it back to the desk. Back to you guys. Thank you so much, Lucy. Luke Laporta, a major figure in Little League Baseball and a Central New York sports icon, passed away today at the age of 89. He was a Syracuse University graduate and a groundbreaking athletic director at Liverpool High School. But furthermore, Laporta served as chairman for Little League International for 15 years, developed the framework for the Empire State Games in New York, as well as helped found the Greater Syracuse Hall of Fame. His connection and impact in Central New York will always be remembered. Oswego County Salvation Army launched a Christmas kettle campaign earlier this week. Oswego Mayor Thomas Gillen stated that November 15th through December 24th will now be considered Salvation Army Kettle Fund Drive season. All funds raised will be distributed to Oswego County people in need in the form of clothing, housing assistance, groceries, and hot meals. Anyone wishing to volunteer can call 343-6491. Pop icon Rick Springfield, who was sued earlier this week by a Liverpool woman, took a stand this morning in front of state Supreme Court. Springfield was denied the, denied the accusations that he seriously injured the plaintiff, Vicki Kelcagno, at a 2004 State Fair concert during his usual audience contact. Kelcagno claimed she was knocked unconscious, but Springfield had no recollection of the incident, only recalling the rainy weather and slippery conditions as a possible cause. Both sides are still planned to testify. Is cursive writing still taught in New York Central, excuse me, Central New York schools? A preble woman, Rhiannon McElroy, says no and takes matters into her own hands. McElroy believes that the increase in technological advancements in Central New York schools is the cause of the issue. She encourages schools to reintroduce this skill to the curriculum. On the Civil War battlefield where President Abraham Lincoln gave a speech that symbolized his presidency and the sacrifices made by Union and Confederate forces, Historians and everyday Americans gather today to celebrate the 150th anniversary of what the Gettysburg Address has meant to the nation. Here you can see people gathered for a ceremony to mark the occasion at the Gettysburg National Cemetery in Pennsylvania. Attendees laid wreaths at the site and observed a moment of silence. Noticeably absent was prominent Lincoln fan President Obama. The White House sent Interior Secretary Sally Jewell in his place. It's unclear as to why the president did not attend. It is nice to see that although Obama could not attend, he did have some representation some. there from the White House. It is really nice about that. A man was sent to Upstate Hospital today after being hit by a car while crossing Harwood Drive in the village of Lacona. 49-year-old Lee Bond sustained multiple fractures and other non-life-threatening injuries in the incident with a Nissan Sentra driven by 57-year-old Sylvia Bonadio. Authorities say the dark road at the time of the accident was the likely cause and no charges are expected to be filed, but the investigation is still ongoing. The closed Syracuse Fire Station 7 will reopen for the 18th year of Central New York's Family Bicycle Giveaway. Jan Maloff, the creator of the bicycle giveaway, heard about the Fire Station 7's closing and jumped at the opportunity to use the building for his cause. If you would like to donate a bike, the drop-off will be from November 23rd to December 20th from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. at the State Fairgrounds. If you thought the Obamacare website had problems, there's another application website making the college application process that much more stressful for high school seniors. WTOP's Megan Roberts explains how changes made to one application website is causing a lot of problems for students and universities. 
As the leaves change their colors to head into the winter season, high school students are preparing to make some major changes in their own lives. But this transition hasn't been so easy. And it seemed to be an influx of just problem after problem after problem. Problems are coming from the popular college application website, the Common App. This year, the Common App made some last minute changes to their website that were supposed to make the process more efficient, but instead are causing headaches for students applying. I spent so long doing it, and I would change it and change it, and it still wouldn't give me the what I needed. Molly Malone is a senior at Oswego High School who was using the Common App to apply to all of her schools. She started out the process fine until she hit a troubling roadblock. The one section you had to fill out your courses you're taking this year, and I kept, like, I had filled it out what I thought was perfectly, and it wouldn't give me a green check. And you need the green check to, like, go on. The problems don't just end with the students. College admission offices can't even open some of the applications they are getting through the Common App. Director of Admissions for SUNY Oswego, Daniel Griffin, said they have experienced any and every problem with the Common App. Many universities are extending their application deadlines because of all the problems students are having with the Common App. Schools like Boston University have extended their deadline until November 15th and Syracuse University until December 1st in order to try to relieve the pressures that students are feeling. As for Molly, after working with her school counselor and using the Common App help site, Molly was able to get her problem fixed. She said that starting early has kept her calm through all the problems. Megan Roberts, Oswego Now. It's really nice to see that the colleges are being understanding with the current situation and are extending the deadlines. It's really nice to see that even though they're basically there for profit. I know it was so stressful for me when I was applying, so it's really great that they're actually helping out the students with this extension. It's actually phenomenal. Yeah, it's nice to see that the college system is working. And that they care. <laughs> very true, very true. A train derailment disrupted Amtrak service between Baltimore and Washington Monday evening. Amtrak says a passenger train headed from New York to Miami came off the rails in a Baltimore tunnel. The train was carrying 154 passengers, none of which were fortunately injured. As a precaution, crews cut off power to the train and Amtrak sent a rescue locomotive to take passengers to the Penn Station in Baltimore. Hey students of Oswego, looking for something fun to do tomorrow night? Maria Full of Grace, a dramatic film, will be shown tomorrow night, Wednesday, November 20th, in the Campus Center Auditorium. The film brings to light the struggles of a 17-year-old Colombian girl who becomes a drug mule. This event will start at 7 p.m. and tickets are free. And coming up after the break, New York State Department of Corrections is spending over $50,000 on new windows. And we will have a live look at your full weather report with WTOP Storm Team 10, Lucy Bergman. Stay tuned, you are watching WTOP 10 News. Hey Laker fans, remember the following. Be loud, be proud, be funny, be civil. Above all, be positive. We've cleaned up our act on the ice. Now it's your turn to clean up yours and stands. Malcolm, you know energy savers last six times longer than regular bulbs. This isn't my room. It, it's, it's Baron Davis's. The basketball player? This is his room? I don't live here. Millions of kids are using their energy wisely. What's your excuse? So, do you have any questions? What is your soup of the day? Uh, we have a mulligatani soup. Oh, do you have any specials? We have a steak special today. Oh, how is that cooked? That's pan seared and then... Baked. Does it come with a side dish? Is it grilled? Can I have it steamed? So, what do you recommend? What kind of pie do you have? You an actor. Aren't you from Ohio? Any questions? Ask questions. For the 10 questions everyone should know, go to ahrq.gov. I got Nicole Sugars in the Shock him throws it real all the time. Just had a few drinks. This can't be happening. Are we clear? Clear. We just buzzed. Just buzzed? You didn't tell us that, sir. You're right, this isn't happening. You'll be fine. 
Yeah, I feel good. Really? No, not really. Buzz driving. Maybe we should stop acting like it's no big deal. Welcome back to WTOP 10. I'm Storm Team Meteorologist Lucy Bergman with a look at your current conditions. If we take a look outside, we'll see that our temperature is about 33 degrees right now, but we do have a real feel of 27 because of those winds from the west 5 to 10 miles per hour cooling things down just a little bit for us. If we take a look at our state temperatures, we'll see that our warm spot is in New York City, 40 degrees for them, whereas the rest of the state is staying between upper 20s and lower 30s. Our cool spot is over in uh, excuse me, Watertown, 27 degrees for them to right now. If we take a look at our national radar, we'll see some precipitation to our north and to our east. But if we zoom in on Oswego, we'll see that we have a nice night out there tonight. Only some clouds to speak of. We do have uh, windy conditions out there. Winds from the northwest increasing through the night, 15 to 20 miles per hour. And our overnight low is 25 degrees. If we take a look at our sky cam image from earlier tonight, we'll see that it's a clear night and a beautiful November night out there tonight. Taking a look at our top weather headlines, we'll see that those temperatures are increasing as we move through the week into Friday. With that, the rain is coming in, unfortunately, and we're going to time that out a little bit better for you, looking like Thursday night into Friday morning with a chance of snow this weekend. I'll have more coming up in just a little bit. But tomorrow, 40 degrees is your high temperature, mostly sunny with winds from the southeast, 5 to 10 miles per hour. But as you're stepping out the door tomorrow morning at 8 a.m., grab that jacket because it's going to be very cold, 27 degrees. As we look at noontime, we're going to see that it's a warm-up to 38. Those clouds are moving in before we hit that high of 40 degrees at about 3, 37 degrees and cloudy for your ride home at 5 p.m. Here's a look at why tomorrow morning and afternoon is going to be so nice and pleasant. We have this area of high pressure sitting right on top of us, bringing that nice sunny conditions um, to us tomorrow and continuing into Thursday as that high pressure system moves to our east. If we look at tomorrow night, we're going to see that there are increasing clouds, an overnight low of 31 degrees with winds from the southwest 15 to 25 miles per hour, excuse me, making that wind chill a little bit cooler than 30 degrees. So definitely bundle up if you're heading outside. We're looking for that precipitation on Friday, and that's because of this low pressure system to our north. As that gains strength, that's going to bring our precip and our rain in on Friday. And as that moves out, it's going to bring these very cool temperatures in for Saturday into Sunday. Overnight, we're going to see a, like almost a 10 degree drop um, from Saturday into Sunday. And with that, the possibility for lake effect snow. We look at our five day forecast, 40 degrees tomorrow, increasing uh, temperatures on Thursday into Friday. That possibility uh, for snow on Saturday into Sunday and uh, definitely a wind chill on Sunday in the teens. Uh, very cool conditions coming up, guys. Wow, it looks like snow over the weekend. Snow. Yes, definitely. We can see accumulations, excuse me, of one to three inches. Um, for this time of year, so uh, as that moves forward, we'll have a better idea. Well, that's a relief we're not getting any huge storms yet. We haven't yeah. hit that season yet, so that's yeah. nice to hear. Keep your fingers crossed, guys. We will. They are. The New York State Department of Corrections is spending $65,000 on new windows at a prison stated for closure this coming July. James McDonald, Chief Steward for the Correctional Officers Association at Butler Correctional Facility, has stated he thinks it's ridiculous and a frivolous expense. The decision to install the windows, however, was made before the closure of Butler was announced. Overall, the investment in the project will have no effect on the savings achieved from closing the facility. New Jersey Governor Chris Christie advised New Yorkers to move to New Jersey on Monday morning. In a speech to the Wall Street Journal CEO Council, Christie states that New York is going in the wrong direction under its Democratic leadership. And also you can't, you know, everything's relative in comparison between the states, but I do expect us to continue to be more competitive. And I think that, for instance, a state like New York is moving in the wrong direction. You know, you've seen taxes being increased there, and now you have a new mayor in New York who is aggressively talking about increasing taxes in New York City. Um, you know, while I feel badly for New Yorkers, um, come to New Jersey. <laughs> you know, it's moving. 
George Zimmerman was released from Johnny Polk Correctional Facility on Tuesday afternoon after posting $9,000 for bail. As part, of the for as part of his release, the former neighborhood watch volunteer is not allowed to have weapons. Zimmerman was arrested Monday after his girlfriend said he pointed a shotgun at her. He said they got into an argument because his girlfriend said she was pregnant and wanted to raise the child on her own. Zimmerman was served with divorce papers while he was in jail, and his estranged wife, Shelly Zimmerman, filed for divorce on September 5th, four months ago. Zimmerman was acquitted of killing teenager Trayvon Martin. A Virginia lawmaker and former candidate for governor is found stabbed in his home. Investigators believe Virginia State Senator Craig Deeds was stabbed by his son, who then shot himself in an early morning altercation in their home, state police announced Tuesday. Karen Kafa reports. A prominent Virginia politician was found stabbed Tuesday morning. Police say state lawmaker Cree Deeds was stabbed multiple times in an incident at his home in Bath County, near the border with West Virginia. Troopers and uh, Bath County deputies arrived to find Senator Deeds stabbed multiple times about the head and upper torso. Also inside the home, the lawmaker's adult son. Senator Deeds' son, Gus Deeds, uh, age 24, also of Millborough, was found inside the residence, uh, suffering from life-threatening injuries associated with a gunshot wound. Despite efforts by troopers and first responders there at the residence, he uh, died at the scene. The elder Deeds was airlifted to the University of Virginia Hospital in Charlottesville. He was able to speak with investigators. Deeds made unsuccessful campaigns for governor in 2009 and for state's attorney general in 2005. He lost both races to now governor Bob McDonnell. McDonnell released a statement Tuesday calling the news, quote, utterly heartbreaking. On Twitter, U.S. Senator Mark Warner, a fellow Virginia Democrat, said, I am praying for Cree Deeds and his family at this very, very difficult time. In Washington, I'm Karen Kafa. It is very heartbreaking, especially with all the tragedies that have been happening recently. And especially to see it in a, a position of power, especially with a state senator. I hope the authorities can really figure out this out pretty quickly yes. and defuse the situation. Of course. And now coming up, Imani Cruz is a surprise for one of the students on campus. And Sebastian Edmund will have a full look at your sports. But first, here's a look at your late night menu. Stay tuned, you're watching WTOP 10 News. The forest is precious. One careless act caused by people and its beauty could be gone for a lifetime. Protect our friends in the forest. Only you can prevent wildfires. Everyone could use a makeover. The forest is precious. One careless act caused by people and its beauty could be gone for a lifetime. Protect our friends in the forest. Only you can prevent wildfires. The Hollywood View is back with a brand new season and a brand new look. Join me for nonstop Hollywood coverage news right here on WTOP 10 every Tuesday at 10.30 p.m. Hi, I'm CNN's Rob Marciano and you're watching WTOP 10, your television station. Every night before the show, me and the guys, we like to loosen up a little bit. Blue, 42, hike! Every now and then, Dan likes to take it a little too far. But hey, the show's all about competition, so we'll take it. Stupid Dan with stupid football and stupid running. Thanks. You believe this guy? 
Are you trying to start a wildfire? Sorry. Pesta, honey? Nine out of ten wildfires are caused by humans. Only you can prevent wildfires. Welcome back, guys. Fashion at Oswego switched it up this week from the usual outfit interviews. I got the chance to give a fashion makeover to one of the students right here at Oswego. Check it out. Everyone could use a makeover. Watch how we transform Miss Sasha Huff. Today, we are in Miss Sasha's closet. We're gonna give her a makeover. Now, Sasha, where would you wear this outfit to? Um, probably a friend's birthday party. A friend's what? A friend's birthday party. Oh no. So, now we've changed up Sasha's look into a more fashionable and appropriate outfit for her friend's birthday party. Okay, so right now we have Sasha in an interview style, okay? There are so many things wrong with this, but let's start with the socks. If you would like to wear socks, go with a bold color like a dark gray or black. Never ever do a bright color and especially not a leopard print color. That is a fashion no-no. If it's one thing that everyone leaves with, please, please never mix a black top and blue pants. A woman's suit should always match. Never mix two patterns when it comes to suits. You want to give off a professional look and you don't want to cause any unnecessary attention to yourself. So now we have Sasha's new and improved look. This is a much more suitable look for an interview. As you can see, her hair is now pulled back. Most importantly, she got rid of that tacky suit and slipped into a really nice and comfy dress. Well, thank you so much, Imani. That was a nice little switch up compared to the other weeks. Yeah, definitely. We tried to switch it up this week since this is our last segment. And I saw that it, that was a very versatile scarf you had on there. <laughs> I know. I just decided to switch it up. I don't know. <laughs> well, and, uh, thank you very much, Imani. No problem. Thank you very much. Later this week, the Human Concerns Food Pantry will be holding a fundraiser. Wednesday, November 20th, participants will be able to take part in fun activities while raising money for a great cause. The event will take place in the Hewitt Union Ballroom from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Make sure you get a chance to stop by. For more information, you can call 312-4895. And now let's take a look at a sports with WTOP 10's Sebastian Edmund. Hello everyone, I'm Sebastian Edmund with your sports update. The Ithaca Bombers paid a visit to Maxiel Gymnasium tonight, but it was the Oswego men's basketball team that exploded for points, winning 99-73. to Shooting almost 53% from the field, the Lakers had four different players in double digits, while the team as a whole dropped 15 buckets from three-point land. Ithaca never led in the game, and they fall to 1-2, and two, while Oswego picks up their second win of the year. The team looks to replicate their offensive efforts against St. Lawrence on the road this Friday. In D1 basketball action, ninth-ranked Syracuse had a scare at home against St. Francis of Brooklyn. All kinds of fans showed up for this one, as we even had some fans sporting a lot of orange. Tight game in the first. Dewan Coleman with a layup to give, us, uh, to give Syracuse a six-point lead. But St. Francis would come back in this one, keeping it close. Jalen Cannon off the glass and a layup.
tie game late in the second. Corner three, Ben Mockford making it 49-46, St. Francis. But Syracuse would not go away. Down by two, C.J. Fair driving, misses. Jeremy Grant cleans it up, puts it back in. Tied with 145 left. Speaking of Grant, he would come up with a big steal right here, pushing the offense on the fast break, dishes it. Michael Binajay with the score to give Syracuse the lead. They would never look back. They would win by six, and Syracuse still undefeated at home. Monday Night Football just seems to attract dramatic and controversial endings, and yesterday's game was no different. In our Monday night matchup, the Panthers and Cam Newton hosted Tom Brady and the Patriots. Tie game in the third, Cam Newton finding his tight end, Greg Olson, how you doing, 17 to 10 Carolina. Later in the fourth, Patriots would tie it up. Savon Ridley, one yard rush to make it all squared up. New England up by three, Cam Newton doing what he does best, avoiding a sack, running 15 yards to pick up the first, which would be very crucial. Later on, second and 15, throwing, finds Ted Gidd Jr., don't touch me defender, gets into the end zone, 24 to 20 Carolina. Tom Brady's done this before, he's looking for that game winning drive. Rob, Gr no, that's not Rob Gronkowski but there would be a flag on the play. The officials would later discuss this and determine that this play right here is not pass interference. They repeal the flag, Tom Brady visibly upset. The Panthers would hold on 24 to 20. And as always, I have your hockey update of the night. All three New York teams are in action and their games just wrapped up. The Islanders fall to the Maple Leafs, Phil Kessel netting two and Jeffrey Lupul with three assists. The Blues beat the Sabres 4-1, to one, Brendan Morrow finding the back of the net twice, and the New York Rangers dropping 2-1 to one to the Bruins. Sean Thornton and Danny Paye were your two scorers in that game. No luck for the New York teams today, but I will have a sports update on the Western Conference matchup of the night later on. Now, back to the desk. And we're going to take a look at the funner side of news right when we get back from this break. This is WTOP 10 News. Get your Smokey on. If you see someone in danger of starting a wildfire, step in and make a difference. Because nine out of 10 wildfires can be prevented. Only you can prevent wildfires. Down 70 to the 35 and the Cougars were getting smoked like a cheap cigar. Hey guys, you should watch our show on Whitup. What? You mean WTOP? No, it's Whitup. No, it's WTOP. Who told you that? Common sense? African-Americans support the United Negro College Fund because a mind is a terrible thing to waste. <laughs> this can't be happening. This can't be happening. Of course it's not happening. Armored car. <laughs> Listen, having money isn't about luck. Make your own coffee, save a thousand bucks a year. Feed me. Feed the pig. And that'll do it for us here at WTOP 10 News. At here in, with us and the entire crew, thank you for tuning in tonight, and stay classy, yes we go.